Welcome back to the Cube, everyone. Here in our Palo Alto studios, I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube, with Dave Vellante, my co-host. We're here for the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leader Series, part of the Cube plus NYU Wired. I was long here, CEO and co-founder of Scale Flux, hot semiconductor company, doing really well, just breaking out. Congratulations on your six. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So, take a minute to, to set the table. Okay, you guys are in uh, the semi market, which everyone knows is hot. It wasn't hot ten years ago no. when you founded. VC funding was dry, but the activity is strong. Take us through Scale Flux, the story, how you guys were founded, what was the mission, and what you're doing now. Certainly. So, <laughs> I came to US for my PhD study at the RPI about 22 years ago, and uh, I did my research over there. Um, um, you know, designed advanced error crash encoding into chips to pack more data into hard disk drives. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, over there, I also uh, met my um, co-founders. Actually, we founded the company after 12 years, graduated from there. And then, uh, b before we founded this company, uh, I uh, did the three things. Uh, one is, uh, at my first job at LSI, now part of Broadcom, to commercialize my re PhD research into a chip that helping packing more data to the disk drive. And that has been shipping, uh, has been shipped over probably a billion units uh, over years. And then in 2008, uh, I joined a startup in the Silicon Valley called Sanfos, uh, because we are seeing that uh, the market will need a much faster uh, storage device and that time, people were talking about SSD. And uh, then uh, at Samples, we helped uh, design the early SSD controller chip to move that into mass market. And if you remember, the first uh, MacBook Air uh, used the, started using the yeah. SSDs. And this is the key element to enable the ultra thing uh, laptop. Yeah, uh, great, great success. And by the way, congratulations, ECC, yeah. It's been very successful in memory and storage. Yes. And now solid state was a revolution. Now a standard, everyone expects mm -hmm. it. Now AI's here, you're seeing smaller, but connected systems. So storage is closer to everything. Mm -hmm. You got interconnects. These AI systems or clustered systems mm -hmm. is changing what a server was yeah. and what a data center looks like. So this is again, again, storage, networking and, and compute. That's right. All are going to still be around, but going to behave differently. Correct. How do you see that? How is Genera changing the nature mm -hmm. of how storage exists and some of these key underlying building blocks? That's why you see at the beginning, all the uh, HDD and SSDs were using the SATA interface um, for the legacy reason. And uh, then later on, um, Fusion IO, as a, um, a early startup, they moved, uh, the in removed the SATA interface and used direct PCIe to connect the fresh memory to the um, processors. So this is the beginning of the PCIe um, SSD. And uh, now um, people are looking for, for a more faster interface. That's why you are seeing um, NVLink, and you are seeing the industry uh, uh, forming the new standard like uh, Ultra Accelerator Link uh, and Ultra Ethernet. So the, the search is the interfaces are getting uh, faster. The other thing is the protocol. Uh, for example, uh, at the beginning, um, the SSDs um, even moved to PCIe, there's no uh, right protocol for that. That's why we see the NVMe protocol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then now we need more DRAM, and uh, now we are seeing the CXL protocol coming. Right? So the certis plus the protocol are uh, really driving the things to move faster between the processor, network, storage, and the memory. So I mean, it was easy before, you just design a motherboard, it was just so easy. Yeah. Now, it's even easier. Yeah. You can design a cluster system. I'm being, I'm kidding, of course. Yeah. But it's a systems design challenge. This is mm -hmm. the key thing. Do you agree with that? What is, what is the core problem and opportunity people going through? Because it looks kind of like a motherboard, but it's not, it's a big system. Yeah. It's a collection that you got connects inside the chips and dies, and then you got the wafers, and then you got the external connections. I mean, it's a design yeah. challenge. Yeah, this is a fascinating. As you can think of, in the past, people are thinking uh, silicon company, just design one chip. Yeah. Um, Intel, AMD, even early NVIDIA's, people are just talking about the chip. Right? And then, 
just chip itself will grow to uh, multiple cores and uh, triplets, and then it's still not enough. That's why you are seeing that uh, multiple uh, processors or GPU, t CPUs, they are connecting to each other. And uh, still, that's not enough. Then you connect with uh, more servers, more racks. <laughs> so essentially, the chip company, like NVIDIA, is evolving into a huge system company <laughs> or platform company. So that's how we are seeing uh, the, uh, the, the silicon industry has been evolving. You know, John, you were saying that mm. um, you know, silicon is kind of it was kind of boring a while ago, but one area that wasn't boring was Flash, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And, and how you, you talked about uh, the, the MacBook Air. I go back earlier from the transition from iPod to iPhone. iPod had a two and a half inch spinning disc. Right. iPhone had Flash, was the yes. first. And then that volume created the economics mm -hmm. that essentially obliterated mm -hmm. the hard disks, mm -hmm. where you started your career helping right. the hard disk. So then you pointed out so Fusion I.O. was really the first. Um, and then they obliterated the SCSI, the chatty you know, the SCSI protocol. Um, the, but the point is, the question I have is, the transition from spinning disk to flash and atomic rights and PCIe was so dramatic uh, because you eliminated a mechanical movement. How would you compare that to the current move toward NVMe, ultra ethernet, um, memory class storage, you know, new, new hierarchy emerging. Is it a, a little bump up or is it as much of a step function? So one key thing we can think of is uh, uh, as the throughput and the latency requirements getting higher and higher. That's why we keep optimizing uh, both the physical layer uh, from the surface uh, as well as the logic layer, which is the protocol. Right? So NVMe, NVMe is a huge step up. Uh, however, it's still dealing with a uh, traditional storage layer with 4K, 16K block size, right? Now, as we know, the processor will need more late, uh, less latency, uh, media access, more memory access. Right? So, and not only faster, but also much bigger capacity, right? So that w that's why uh, recently there are, say, um, CXL getting into the play to optimize the, you know, bridge the gap between the MME latency over, over the DRAM and the CPU latency. So this is within the server. Right. And across servers, obviously, you have network. Um, you have TCP IP, obviously, that's going to be a little slow for some high performance um, or AI environment. And you are seeing a lot of RDMA. And then, uh, now we are talking about Archer Ethernet to further boost the, the uh, efficiency and performance latency. So two questions, where do you play in that hierarchy? Do you actually participate in CXL? And, yeah. and for CXL, you sound um, optimistic about CSL, but, but it's quite expensive, is it not? And it doesn't have the, the volume economics of, mm -hmm. of flash. So mm -hmm. how do you see that playing? Where do you play and, okay. and what about the, the cost? So uh, we mainly play uh, in the servers for now. So uh, the chips and the uh, firmware software solution we developed actually is connecting the fresh memory to the CPU GPUs and also another solution, CXL controller chip is connecting the DRAM to the CPU GPU and TPUs. And so this is what we play. We are literally connecting the two largest uh, semiconductor domains. On the top is the processors and the bottom is storage and the memory. So that's how we play. I, I, and that, it's, it sounds like you don't necessarily have a direct uh, uh, effect here, but high bandwidth memory, obviously very hot topic today. Mm -hmm. How does that fit into what John was asking about, about the system architecture? We all know systems have to be in balance or else you create bottlenecks. Can you help us understand that system evolution? That's a great question. So as you know, uh, people talk about the memory wall. That means the process getting faster and uh, the bottleneck actually moves to the access to the memories, to read and write data and feed the data to the processors. So that's why um, the HBM, um, what's interesting, HBM uh, has been de developed for over a decade. However, until probably two years ago, suddenly it becomes so hot. The reason is there's no better solution than that to 
you know, shorten the latency from the DIMMs of the DRAM in the servers. And, uh, you know, that HPN is, a, is filling the gap for them. Uh, however, the challenge we are seeing is um, the capacity, the bandwidth, and the cost scaling for the future is still very, very challenging. That's why uh, we probably need a, the extension of that. So that's why we are talking about the CXL that can naturally expand more capacity, bandwidth, as well as average down the cost for the much larger tier of DRAM. So it helps balance out that system. Uh, who makes these things for you? What's, what's your process? Can you help us understand the fab? Because you're fabless. But. Yes, so of course, uh, our uh, key IP and uh, value is designing the chip solution and the software firmware for that. Uh, we partner with TSMC and uh, we are using multiple geometry nodes depending on which uh, CPU platform and the PCA generation. TSMC is listed on the NYSC. FY, yeah, TSMC. The leading semiconductor company, by the way, mm -hmm. on the NYSC. I think they'll all probably end up being there soon. You know, we've done our five-year yeah. forecast, by the way, of, uh, of a number of like the top 20 semiconductor firms. You should check that out. Yeah, Keep it's awesome. Stuff. And I think well, the thing about the chips, though, is that they are becoming platform companies. So. The semi category mm -hmm. is interesting. Oh, they're a semi company. The people like to put people in boxes in companies. Not the case now. And I think this is where I, I wanted to get into what you guys see as your market opportunity as you guys keep growing. Okay, you make chips, TSMC manufactures it. They're the they're the top top dog in the industry. Where do you guys fit? What are you targeting? What's the value proposition? What's what's the what's the focus? So all value is mainly help the industry to solve the bottlenecks um, for the data pipeline. As you can see, the data uh, will move between the storage, which is the SSDs, to the DRAMs, and then to the processors. Right? As the process of speed is getting higher and higher, uh, then the bottleneck will move around the you know, pipeline. Mm -hmm. So um, all value for our ecosystem is really focusing on how to solve uh, the data movement and the bottleneck between those uh, uh, around this data pipeline. Who are your customers? Who are you selling to? It's mainly the data centers, mm -hmm. uh, either the hyperscaler or web scaler or enterprise. Uh, and on the other hand, we are also uh, working with OEM and the memory companies. Uh, as you know, the chip has to plug in with memory or, uh, or storage together with the processors. Mm -hmm. So. That's how we, we see. You mentioned that people have started building a lot of box, yeah. but for now, I think yeah. we are building the key elements for this box, so we can remove mobile. Yeah, and I think the, the thing that we're seeing is it's not, it's not about the chips, it's what's around them. Yes. And you brought up Ultra Ethernet as, as, as a standard. That's an open standard too, so although NVIDIA uses InfiniBand, but they're even going to Ethernet. Jensen was saying right. they're going to play both sides of the fence there, but it's pretty clear Ethernet looking like to be the clear winner. Right. Um, but then you got now these new designs. Mm -hmm. This is where the action is right now. Um, mm -hmm. All the top companies we talked to is, and the Hyperscales did this a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And when Nitro came out with Interpreno with Amazon, mm -hmm. you already saw the silicon movement, Apple was doing it. So these workloads are end to end in the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so they're starting to scope them doing. So we're, we're seeing a trend where people are going to purpose build device or systems mm -hmm. for those workloads. Do you agree with that? What's your reaction to that? Yeah, so that's why uh, we call it the, the renaissance of silicon. <laughs> so five years ago, you probably see 90% uh, of processor in data center were dominated by one company. And then now you are seeing probably more than 10, uh, 10 times more pro new uh, processors. A lot of priority from the CPU, ARM-based CPUs, uh, TPUs, AI training and inferencing chips. Right, so yeah. suddenly you are seeing whole a lot. And even at the PC and the mobile side, yeah. there's, a, there's more coming. We always have a joke on theCUBE, whenever a big wave comes, we're going to have a CUBE version of Hadoop, we're going to have a CUBE version of AI, <laughs> which we actually do now. CUBE coin. We want to have a, we had a CUBE coin, we actually still have that. But we should get a CUBE chip. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, so you know, all joking aside, the custom silicon cycle times are mm -hmm. shrinking significantly. It's still long, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I mean, compared to what it was to build a chip, mm -hmm. just go back a decade. Yeah. The time it takes to make a good chip mm -hmm. was very long. 
Yeah. Well, ARM okay. changed everything. Yes. Right? So, I mean, the time to tape out today, mm -hmm. I don't know. What is it today? 18 months maybe or less that you can get the tape it out? It depends on which type of yeah, chip. Yeah, of course. With, but, with, but it used to be years. Yes. With anyway, the democratization sorry. on the design mm -hmm. side, with TSMC, who's really been strong at this, and, and ARM as well, making mm -hmm. this, this trend, what do you guys see as custom silicon? So some of the packaging out there mm -hmm. is really portable mm -hmm. and reusable, so you can, there's a trend emerging where if you have the need for a chip, it's gettable. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your view on that? I mean, custom silicon going to be super important? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think over the years, this industry has become becoming more modularized. So you have a lot of wonderful IPs uh, from uh, ARM, Synopsys, Cadence, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so uh, that's why a lot of the customers, they can quickly define their spec and find a design house or in-house to put a chip together. Yeah. yeah. So I think for certain type of chip, this, this is a great way to do it. Uh, however, not all the chips, right? So because in uh, the data center, in the infrastructure, uh, there are many different type of chips that will need different yeah. effort. Some are still more traditional. You have a two to three, two to three years development cycle, some yeah. probably one year. So there's some, just not one um, definite rule for yeah. uh, how long it's yeah. going to take. It's, it's democratized, a lot of choices, a lot of choices. Which creates good switching costs. Final question before we wrap up is, mm -hmm. you know, as you look at um, your business, okay, mm -hmm. um, obviously you get your PhD, your buddies get together, you start a company, mm -hmm. and you do some great things. What's your bet right now on the company? What if you had to look out and say, you know, we're betting on blank? What what's the big bet? Our big bet is when we look at the whole market, uh, the last uh, uh, ASIC house or platform we built up was actually more than twenty years ago. It was Marwell. And what we are seeing is, you know, they did a great job, uh, which I was very familiar with because they started with the rich channel chip for the hard disk drive, <laughs> right? And then they uh, start expanding to more product lines and gradually build up the uh, ASIC or SOC uh, design platform to supply more chips. However, if you look at in the last 20 years, there's no more new platform growing up. And what we found out is actually, now, with today's data center, uh, the cycle is way too long for the data storage and memory controllers. So after we spending multiple years on multiple generation product, we find a much better recipe to improve the efficiency of designing the silicon solutions of that type. Yeah. So what we are really excited is we are building a new generational platform to support the future infrastructure. That's yeah. what we are up to. And people are building, and they're building systems. Yes. This is, I call the new motherboard, but, <laughs> but it's, it's a data center. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate you. So. Congratulations you. on your success. Bring you all the action here in Palo Alto at theCUBE studio in Silicon Valley for Silicon Valley's AI Infrastructure Day with theCUBE plus NYSE Wired. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm -hmm.